Sometimes it's the singing on the screen just before and John, thank you for the job you do for that. Sometimes it's just something that happens in the worship service that reminds you of, of earlier years. And this morning I got reminded of an early Christmas service. I don't know why, I don't know what the connection is, but I'm sitting over here, just taking a brief look to my right, and so about that moment, Colton body slams his little sister. <laughs> And she ain't him of these. How are you going to look? And Christmas just keeps floating back to me. You know, it's the thing you need to be a, a preacher's son or a preacher's grandson. All your moments are in church. They're usually on the front row so nobody can see. <laughs> Colton, nice throw. <laughs> Choir, very <laughs> sick.
ransom, Captain Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thy days bring come and cheer our spirits. First, the gloomy clouds of night, and as dark shadows put to flight, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, these are. You guys are too old to be called children, youth. All the younger than, much younger than I am would come forward. Would you guys come up? You're going to help me light the Advent candle this morning. Come up here, Everett, Colton. I need help this morning. I need lots of, okay, it's all right. I, I could use you two guys to read. Would you read for me? It's real short, real short. Come on, you can just sit right here and be cool. All right, come on. Everett, don't hide under the chair. That's <laughs> all right. Come on, Kai. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you something, and you guys are probably too old. Is there something you want for Christmas? What do you want? A piano keyboard. Did you hear that, Corey? A piano keyboard. And now, cool. She gives lessons. Piano keyboard. We're going to write these down. We're not... Send them off. Okay, what else? Be thinking. What else? Now, have you thought of anything? Anything you want for Christmas? A big green dinosaur. A dinosaur, a green one. Okay, they got to be green. A T-Rex. Green, T-Rex. We're going to put T-Rex down. All right, Colton. A toy what? Toy car. Hi. You got a plug in your mouth, so you can't tell anybody else. Anybody out here got something you want for Christmas? A red rider. A red rider. You'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> you knew that was coming, didn't you? Beep, beep gun. Okay. Who else? Red, red, red. Gary, what do you want? A four by four. Four by four. <laughs> okay, they make those matchboxes. And you want a new red wagon too, don't you? Yeah. I'm talking about the big one. Oh, you're talking a big one. Gary wants a big one. Okay. Okay, then now we're getting into what I'm probably talking about here. Okay, now you could say these are wish list, right? <laughs> Some of it's a hope and a dream, I think. <laughs> they don't give away those big four by fours, I don't think. <laughs> um, yeah, Gary Blankenship's got a really nice one that we all have our eye on, but you could ask him if he can give it to you. Uh, <laughs> but we call these things wish lists, right? And you wish you'd get them, you hope. You, you hope you get these, and you might get them. I really do hope you get that keyboard. When I was 
six. I wanted a bicycle. I wanted a 26 inch bicycle. My leg didn't fit a 26 inch bicycle, so I, but I got a 26 inch bicycle. It was from the Sears and Roebuck catalog. That's what they had before Google, and you could search things. And you searched through the catalog, and it was cool. I got it. Unfortunately, before I was ever able to ride it very well, you know what it did? It rusted. The chrome fenders rusted because I left it outside. That's where I could find it every day because it was outside. Uh, but so I wanted it, but it didn't last. So when we get these things, your keyboard will last quite a while, and I hope it lasts something you'll use in the future. A toy car, who asked for the, Colton, you want a toy car? You may not always play with that, but it'll last pretty well. Uh, the Red Ryder BB gun just depends on if Amanda doesn't take it away from you because you shot something you shouldn't. I got four. Okay. The Red Wagon, I know why she wants the Red Wagon. So, and, and they, that takes a lot of, they do break down. We found that out last year. So what I'd say is some of these things that we get, they don't last forever. But we're going to talk about hope. Come here, sweetie. We're going to talk about hope this morning because that's our theme. We're going to light the first candle. We're going to light this Advent candle. I said I'd like for you to read something. But I'm going to talk about hope that's lasting. And this goes back, about how long ago you, do you guys think it was that Jesus was born? Got any ideas? How long ago? 400 years. It's a little longer now, but that's a good guess. 2000. 2000. Very good. About 2000 years ago, Jesus was born and he still lasts today. We're still giving thanks and going to him today and, and receiving his forgiveness and his love. But before he was born into this earth, he existed, but not as a human. And the Bible talks about this. This, this right here was, whoops, was spoken about 700 years before Jesus was born. See that, that uh, highlighted with a line under it right there? Would you read that for me? Hang on a second. I'm going to have you read that for me, okay? There, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with the child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel. You know who that son is? That's Jesus. And this was written, what do you think? Uh, it was around 700 or so years before Jesus was born. God made, his, made this statement through his prophet Isaiah that said he would come and be born. Yes? Are we doing the... Yeah, I'm going to give those out too before you leave. So that was a prophecy that was told that kind of kept people to have hope. And he's getting away before I give him the next one. I was going to give him the next one to read. He walked off on me. Okay, the next one is from another prophet. And this was maybe five, six hundred years before Jesus was born. And you can read that one for us, too. And it's uh, underlined, it's, uh, let's see, starts with therefore, 29.11. No, right there. For I know, yeah. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Hope. Hope was in both of those verses. Throughout all of time, God has given, one of the things he wanted to give us is hope. And what we're getting ready for is Christmas, right? And that's the hope that comes through Jesus. There's some words that we use at, at Christmas called hope and joy and love and peace. And sometimes we think of those as emotions, but those are something that we can have given to us in Jesus through just knowing him and living. And having God with us. So this morning, our first first candle that we light is that of hope. And it's the hope that is founded in the birth of Christ, his son. So I need a volunteer. Okay, your first hand up, so you can light it today. I need a volunteer to light this candle right here, okay? You want to do that for me? All right. Come on, I'm gonna I'm gonna get lit for you. You'll have I'll probably have to keep my finger on it. But. Well, come on, I practiced I practiced earlier. <laughs> there we go. Okay, come here. I need you. All right, so grab onto it with me. And we're gonna light this candle right here. This is the candle of hope. The candle of hope. Let's pray together, okay? God, you love us through all time. 
and you promised your son would be born, and everyone had hope in your, the coming of Jesus. Today we have hope for, your, for this Christmas, for all that it provides to us through Jesus, and also we look forward to a future hope when you will come again. And I thank you for these children that have come get, and youth who have gathered around us today. And they give us hope for our future as well. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right. I've got something for you. Uh, I've got these Advent calendars. You can take one of those. Here's one for your sister. You guys can take, take one and pass it down. I'll take my Bible back. And if you want to take one home to your, any of your family that's not here, you can do that. You each should have one, okay? You get one, too, and you get one for your sister. Take, take two of them and give them back to me, okay? There she comes. <laughs> you should have come up here in the first place. All right. Now, Miss Natalie is going to take you guys on now to, uh, to, uh, with her upstairs, I think. So you guys can head on. Here you go, buddy. You got two? Okay, there you go. All right. Who else needs one this morning? For any grandchildren, come up and get them. I'll have them up here, and you can take one with you. Uh, this morning, we gather it's on this first Sunday of Advent, and we'll light these each Sunday, and I'm going to do them with the children this year, kind of as a, uh, just to remind them of how special God is through these words that we speak. Next week is joy, so I think that'll be even more. We'll have fun doing that one. Um, and you can add your name to this list as well, if you want to, or what you would like to have for Christmas. Now, I do have something for you this morning that I'd like for you to take with you, and I have some up here with me. We, each year, we provide an Advent devotion, and these are special for you to have just for those days now through Christmas, and this one is called God Blesses Everyone. Does anybody know where that comes from? Charles Dickens, right? And so these are based on the, the Charles Dick, Dickens story, The Christmas Carol. So that's last year, I think it was something... I forget what it was, but it was along a similar line. So uh, we have these up here. They're out on the table. Please take one or take one to someone else as well, and you will enjoy that through your Advent time together. Uh, out on the table, there are these that are for um, uh, poinsettias, if you'd like to have a poinsettia here at Christmas for in memory or honor of someone. Please fill one of those out. I think they're $14 if you'd like to do that. And we do have those calendars you can take to grandchildren if you'd like. Um, now, a couple of other announcements that I that I have regarding that. I believe the, the late the women of the church are going on Wednesday. Are going to meet at uh, Carriage Inn at noon, right? Meet at Carriage Inn at noon and uh, enjoy at lunch together. And I'm looking for my notes that I have for other things that are going on this week in the life of our church. There'll be no Tuesday meal this week. It returns a week from Tuesday, which we will have that. I think it's vegetable soup. Uh, we do have the, and also ombre, offering boxes are out on the table, the Advent coin boxes. And then you can also pick up offering envelopes uh, for the year 2023. I think, are they out on the table too, Martha? This table right out here. Okay. Yes, Teresa. So Tuesday, 1015, Youth Home on Burkhart, that's the building on the left, go into, and they're going to, they need some assistance uh, doing their annual mailer for Christmas, and they ask us if we can come and help and need a four, five, six, however many show up, and uh, to enjoy that together and help out the Youth Home. So that's Tuesday, this Tuesday coming up. We also, uh, we serve the Youth Home on Wednesday, we'll be taking a meal to them on Wednesday. Um, Next Sunday will be the Sunday of Joy. The choir will be uh, singing again next week. And choir will meet on Wednesday night. And you're more than welcome to come and join us at choir. We are singing Christmas music right now, which we're preparing for each uh, Sunday and on Christmas Eve. So please come and join us if you'd like. Um, any joys anyone would like to share this morning? Have a good Thanksgiving, everyone? Good? Good? 
Yes, Betty. Frank celebrated his 92nd birthday party. Frank celebrated his 92nd birthday party. Good job, Frank. Still very young. He is. That's amazing. Good job. Keep it up. I, I expect many, many more of those. So, who else? That's a great joy. Steve and Barb, yes. It's a great joy to be back in church with God's people. It's okay to worship on TV, but I prefer to be here. <laughs> yes, we're glad they've been under the weather, as are many this morning. The soup lunch, we've had a few uh, casualties on that that couldn't be here because of sickness going on. So we do know that that is prevalent. And there's the double whammy of, well, I think it's a triple whammy, isn't it? There's COVID, there's RSV, and there's flu going around. So. There's many things that we have to stay away from, and some of those Thanksgiving gatherings have contributed to that, I think. So, Sites, it's good to have you back with us this morning. Well, I see them a, a lot, but haven't seen them as much lately. So, so. Um, Let's see, I got a cup. I think that's all my announcements. Um, prayer list this morning. Um, Advent's important. Ad, Advent's not a waiting game. It's a preparation game. It's a preparation for, for renewal and for knowing of how much God loves you and care. Christmas just is such a reminder of God's great love. Because since, well, since the fall, we have needed what happened in Christmas for Christ to come to be with us. And for him to come to be with us. And we learn of his righteousness and, and, and all of who he is so that then we would desire to have that too. So it's... It's that we might be instilled with God's love, God's joy, God's hope, not peace. Not to have them as emotions, but have them permeating through us and live through our, his righteousness in our life. Because we know Christ came for more than just to be celebrated at Christmas. He came to die for our sins. So we need him in our life. We needed him for all those years that, that the waiting game was going on. And then there's also another second advent that this also reminds us of, that he will come again. Christ will come again. Let's, is there any, are there any prayer requests this morning? Yes, Don. Don's neighbor. I know Ruth Ann, your friend. Um, family of, uh, of Dane Kissel. The service will be on Tuesday. Dear friends of ours. So. Let's pray together. Gracious and eternal God, uh, our hope is in you. There's many things in life we hope will happen, but the full assurance of hope comes through the Son, Jesus, born to us on Christmas Day. To be God with us, Emmanuel. And that's such a great promise that we can each have. The, Lord, I pray this morning for the, the I don't know what, how to put it, Lord, but the, the sadness of Christmas is that we just celebrate a, a, a season of, of gift giving and lights and fun and forget how much we need Christ in our life. That child of Jesus is, is so much more than, than just an infant lying in a manger. He is life, his forgiveness, his hope, his grace. And this morning, it would be our hope that all would come to know him, that we would come to live through him, and we'd have eternal hope, eternal hope through Christ our Lord. Lord, our, our prayers are for those we love this morning. Maybe it's for those that no one else even knows here, but it's on your heart on this day. God be with them. Pray for Don's neighbor, Helen's friend, Vanessa's having terrible backache in this day, God be with her. And Lord, for those suffering from the illnesses that are going around, Lord, we do pray for healing and patience to get through this difficult time. Lord, God be with each and every one. And Lord, we, we give thanks for our church as we begin a new life together as McCutcheonville Community Church. Might we be continue to be a light and, and, and be at peace with where we are at, and show you to others through the ministry and the work of your people. I pray this through Christ our Lord as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One last thing I didn't remind you of is right after worship today, we will go into the fellowship hall for lunch together. And we'll also invite you to stay after that as we work together to decorate the church. So, I have this serious problem with Christmas presents. Don't worry, no soapbox is here. No, see, the problem is actually with me. I hint at the gifts, you know? I spill the beans and I ruin the surprise every year. But I can't help it. I love it so much. Mommy, I need you! I'm coming, sweetie! Spoiling the surprise kind of reminds me how God works. He likes to hint at big things. Like the way he hinted about that very first Christmas gift. All those years ago, the Lord himself shall give you a sign, and the virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son, and he shall be called, do you remember? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yeah, he was preparing a gift, all right. God packed up the greatest gift that the world had ever seen. Not even he could keep it to himself. He gets me. And God didn't just let the surprise slip once. No, he let the cat out of the bag nearly 300 times in the Old Testament. We call them prophecies. But here's the big difference between God's prophecies and just <laughs> spoiling a surprise. One is giving the gift early, but you don't get to open it. And the other is 
God giving us a gift of hope while we wait for Jesus to come. <laughs> Do you see it? He wasn't telling us a secret. He was making us a promise. Because we humans, three chapters into the creation story, we managed to mess it all up. Yeah, we needed saving. Desperately. So, God kept sending us hope through his prophets and messengers. And that hope was the gift of his son, the Messiah. And there will never be a greater gift than Jesus. And the cool thing is that hope isn't over. He promises to come again and take us all home. So the gift is just right there. The question is, will you accept it? The wonder of Christmas. That's our theme this year for Advent, and we kick it off with the Sunday of Hope, and we'll go through each one of the, the uh, Advent themes concerning that. Um, you know, part of the wonder of Christmas is that God has always wanted his people to have hope. And it's, as was said in the video, over 300 times in the Old Testament, there was a promise made that pointed to the birth of Christ, pointed to a Savior to be born, pointed to Emmanuel. You know, of all the words that, that describe the birth and Christmas, Emmanuel, I believe, has always been my favorite. Because Emmanuel is... God with us. And we think of the birth of the Son, born on Christmas Day, that we, we all love the warmth and the, and the pageantry and the thought and the, the spirit, if you want to call it that. That's a, one of our words, not the Holy Spirit. It, it centers to me on so much that God is with me. God is with me. His death, his life, his his resurrection all pointed to how much I needed that Savior that God was willing to sacrifice his own son for my sins. So the wonder of Christmas is that, that God promised that and delivered on his promise through the birth of Christ and fulfilled all of the, the prophecy throughout the Old Testament. Um, it, came to, it came to happen. It happened. The, the incarnate God, God with flesh on, came to be with us through his son and it gives us hope for eternity um, don't know how many times i have thought of this through services that i have had the privilege and to do and we'll have again this week of, of remembering someone in their in their uh, at the end of their life after they passed and gone on and how can we set through a service a funeral service, we won't call it, if we don't have hope. We don't have hope. And that hope doesn't rest in anything more than Jesus Christ and his gift of life offered to all of us. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that the wonder of Christmas is felt and known throughout all this Christmas. Not for its splendor and majesty and parades and gift giving and, and lights. Because that's exactly the opposite of you, our Lord Jesus Christ. You're humble. You're a servant. You chose, you might call it a barn to be buried, to be, to be born into with none of the finest at your disposal. Yet, it was greatly announced and greatly remembered. So this Christmas, may your promised hope be delivered into our hearts and lives through the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There's a passage. Just kind of hit me to throw this one in at the beginning. We know that in all things, 
We know that in all things, stop right there for a moment. You know your circumstances. Your circumstance perfect? No. But in all things, God works for the good. Works for the good. How can he work for the good in my situation that sometimes is moment by moment? Think about those people for some time prior to Christ. How much they struggled. They were attacked. They were in slavery. They didn't have a leader. Their sacrificial system seemed to be something that only the, the priest really could carry out and seemed to take advantage of people in doing so. How can these things be all things? God doesn't know my circumstances, but God does know your circumstances. He really does, and He can use all of your circumstances of life for good and does. For all those who love him. Got to look at the rest of that verse. Got to look at those verses. We've got to be devoted to him. We've got to place our hope in him. We place our joy, our love, our peace in Christ our Lord. And we're all imperfect at doing that. I know that. Yet God is so much more full of patience and, and forgiveness than we can ever be. So he works for your good, friends. He works for your good. If, so just love him back. And also you've been called according to his purpose. According to his purpose. You know, I, I was thinking, what, what's a, something in this world that goes on where people are called out or separated and and, I, I, you know, I'm somewhat sports-driven at times, and forgive me for that. Some pastors aren't that way. That's, that's been my past, so I, just the way it is. I think of those draft days or like National Football League or basketball or something like that. When those number one draft choices come out on stage, they roll them out, and the first half a dozen or so, or maybe even more than that, they bring out there, and they put the hat on, and they put, they put their jersey on them, and, and then they, they hand them millions of dollars right? Before they've ever done a thing. You'd think they're set for life, wouldn't you? You'd think everything's going to be all right, except oftentimes that fame is fleeting. Very few of them, well, there's a number of them, I guess, but some of them don't pan out. They might have the glory one day, and within a short time, they're finished. They're done with their playing career. Hopefully they have made provisions with some of the financial arrangements that have been made for them and, and do all right. But you can think of that. All things really didn't work for them the way they'd hoped, the way they had planned for their future, had they? By contrast that with a God who is constant, a Savior who is forever with us, whoever patient with us, whoever leads us. He never throws us off the team or trades us away. We're always good enough to be with him. Even though we sometimes think we haven't done a good, good enough things, but that's not what it's all about. We're provided the opportunity to be with him through him, through his forgiveness and his grace. So it's not how good we've been in our past, like those players who get drafted immediately and get thrown all this fame and glory We're with God because of Him. And I'd lot rather put my hope in, in an eternity, an eternal God, than I would a team or a workplace or money or any of those things that we're often, so often led to do. Hope. Hope tells me what the Scripture says, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's hope. That I can't go the road alone, that's hope. That even I fail, yet I'm forgiven and given a second chance, that's hope. Yet I have someone who's by me thick and thin, that's hope. When I depend on myself, when I depend on myself, I fail. I'm standing on an island all by myself. And that doesn't go well. But if I'm standing with Christ, I have hope. 
Advent is here, friends. We're, we're preparing for his, not only his first coming, but for his second coming. This passage was referred to in the video. You like this passage? This, was, this wasn't a day or two before Jesus' birth. It was some 700 or so years. And things weren't going well for the, for the people of God, for the Hebrews. They were being attacked on all sides. And the kingdom had already been busted apart, forgive me for my English. It had been split apart. People were failing. The, the sacrificial system was, was not bringing people closer to God. It was being used as a, as a um, tool almost for profit for, the, for many people. Yet the prophecy promised by Isaiah, and Isaiah was not a particularly uh, uh, celebrity, I guess we'll put it that way, in, his own, in, in that time. We know him today through his words. But at that time, he gave us these words that were given to him. As a prophet, remember, a prophet speaks for God. They're not giving their words. They're speaking strongly for the word of God. He said, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign and behold a virgin. Who would that virgin be? Mary. Mary shall conceive and bear a son, Jesus, and we shall call him Emmanuel, which means what? God with me. God with us. God with each of us. So out of the darkness of that very time, we, we kind of, in Christmas is another time, but I think the lights do remind us, we've got the lights on our tree back here, that there, the world can be very dark, but out of that darkness comes light. And that light is Christ coming into the world. One person said this, hope is being able to see that there is light despite all the darkness. Sometimes we're just barely clinging to it, right? Sometimes that... It, it's not a very bright bulb at times. Sometimes it's, you seem like, it seems like it's wearing out. But hope is being able to see that there is light despite all the darkness. And God gave that promise of hope, not just to this church or that church or a denominational church. That hope is given to all of us. Everyone, hope. Hope is a great thing to carry with you in life. Another great prophecy I had the, the, that we read earlier is from Jeremiah. And this is, again, this was moving forward another 100 or 150 years after Isaiah's prophecy. I think she said some 300 times in the, in the Old Testament, the promise of a Savior to be born is given to us. And I'm not, I didn't go through and count them. That's something that was, has been given to us said, Jeremiah, another great prophet, said, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. If that doesn't describe Jesus Christ, I don't know what does. He is the hope in the future. He is the hope in the future. Now, we're moving quickly. So, buckle up. Now we're 700 years after this. We're 700 years. And we have the humble Mary and her betrothed Joseph entering into the picture. And Matthew gives us the recording of this found in the first chapter. This is the first chapter of the very first gospel, the very first chapter of the, of the New Testament. Okay? And it, and it leads right into But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Can't you? I, I think God wanted to write this paragraph for years. That's why it's the first chapter of the first, ver or the first book of the New Testament. God had to bust it out, had to get it to us. He wanted his son to come and save us all. Because he wants us close to him. He wants us to have hope that rests in a Savior. He will save us from our sins. See, we were flailing about. Did anyone see the, the uh, 
I saw it again last night. I think I've seen it the last two nights on the news about the person who somehow went overboard off the cruise ship. And he flailed around in the water for some 15 hours before someone spotted him and, and saved him. They said he was almost done. I can't imagine. It didn't look like he had any kind of thing he was even clinging to. How can you tread water for 15 hours? It was stated after this, and this is something that I thought was an interesting twist on this. They said oftentimes, they, there was a psychologist spoke, I believe, or they spoke to a psychologist, that a person, the only way that they survive things like this is that they're hoping to return to something, maybe a family, maybe a loved one, maybe something. They're, they're, they're hanging on, hoping for something that is next. Everything should have pointed to this person drowning and never been heard from again or being attacked by a shark or whatever in water. Yet they survived. He survived this. He survived this incident. So you can look at us now for the people of God who, who were waiting all those hundreds of years for Jesus to be gone and, and flailing about, and they became survivors. We've become a survivor. And it's given us hope that we can survive all that comes against us through a Savior. He needed to be saved. And I don't know how he even got their attention, but he did. His man in the ocean needed to be saved, and all of us on a greater scale need saving as well. Genesis 3 reminds us, and it was also reminded in the video, that, that through our disobedience, through humankind's disobedience, and we can't put, put the blame on Adam and Eve, if once you say whoever has the sin cast the first stone, we we can we have not been righteous ourselves. So from that instant forward, we needed Jesus, we and we needed hope. Now the hope remained. The hope was was you know David was a great king who provided hope, but there weren't that many great kings who were in the leadership of God's people to give them hope. The the, the prophets were sent to keep that thread of hope alive to all people. So why did Jesus come? Remember this passage is recorded in the Gospel of John. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said this, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. So we have an adversary that adversary was the tempter, tempter for Adam and Eve, and we still have that same tempter today. The, then Jesus said he came, he came to save us from that one who seeks to kill and destroy us. So we can't do it alone. Again, we need the hope of having a Savior. Disciple John reminds us once again that the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. So you have hope of survival in this world against all the adversarial things that can come against you, whether that's through any family um, a relationship, a workplace, a struggle, financial issues, all those. You know, sometimes we don't think the Bible is very clear about things. Sometimes we try to read too much into this. There's nothing that we have to read into this verse at all. Jesus came to save us, to save us. He is our Savior throughout all things. We have an enemy prowling around at all times. Jesus came to save us. So we need that hope of having someone who can, can pull us out of the despair of the ocean that we're flailing around in to give us hope. We have hope because the one who could save us from the destruction of our enemy finally arrived on the scene to rescue us and give us back our, our, our lives. Now we say sometimes that we don't know why things happen when they do. We, think, we just say, well, that's God's timing. It was God's timing when Jesus came. It'll be God's timing when he comes again. Amen on that? We be patiently, but be in preparation for him to come again. In hope. 
Again, I'm just reminding you some of those verses that we have about why Jesus came and, and what he offers to us. And this one in the book of Hebrews says, since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in our humanity, in their humanity, our humanity, so that by his death, he might break the power of the devil. That is the devil. And free those whose lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. And I, I put that, that's not in the Bible. That's my added. That's you and I who came along later. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest, serving his father, he might make atonement for our sins. You know, Jesus not only forgave us from our sins, but also he freed us and positioned us to be fulfilled by him so we could enjoy an abundant life, a peaceful life. We don't have to go along, go along with forlornness in our, in our heart and life. Or, or you know, <laughs> I'm tired of this thing, <laughs> by the way. Did, Teresa knows that. <laughs> I'm hoping to get it off on Wednesday. But I am typing. You remember the first week I had, I, I said the reason I had to have this because I couldn't hit the A's on my keyboard. I was, my finger was bent and I was hitting Z's. It straightened my finger back out, so I'm hitting A's. But it still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> There's, I go at, at night, Teresa, I'll be laying there, especially last night. It was just killing me last night. You know, but when I look back at that, that incident where it, I, I was so upset because it was, it was really hurting, it doesn't, all those things we have in life are nothing compared to the hope that I have in a Savior. I can face the day-to-day. -day. I can even, and I need to put a smile back on my face more, right? And, uh, and uh, enjoy this time of year because I'm reminded of hope. Yeah. Jesus said in Revelation 20, 220, he did tell us this. I've gone through all, you can read this one, it's on the verse now, but he also said, I am coming soon. I didn't want to let this, this first Sunday of Advent is hope because the people the, were waiting for the first Advent all this time for him to come the first time. Now we're in the second period waiting for him to come again. Take us to be with him. That's why the church needs to be so active to, to bring others to Christ so that they're preparing for that Advent as well. So all are preparing for that. But Jesus said this. Now, Soon to God, remember all those people thought he, they needed him before, and then they missed it. The second time he comes, we'll not miss that one. Read Revelation. There'll be a lot going on. And he said, I am coming soon. Now, in God's timing, that's different than our timing. That soon will, be, will happen. It's a guarantee. So we say in communion in our service, Christ Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Christ will come again. So as I close, I give you this. I love this, this old hymn. My hope is built in nothing less than Jesus Christ, Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest, I don't trust all that's going on around me on this earth, whether it's politics or even the church in these days. But I wholly lean on Jesus' name. And on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Friends, Jesus gives us hope. Jesus gives us hope. Let's pray. The hope of all time is you, Christ, our Lord, Emmanuel. There was a great promise made that you would come the first time and you came. I pray that we might receive that promise through forgiveness and the grace that is offered to us. That we might repent and receive that forgiveness and live a life with you. 
that we might have hope for your second coming where you will restore all righteousness for all time. Finally set the evil one in his place and allow true life the way you had planned it to start with. So God, as we go through each Sunday, we move from hope from this knowledge of this to great joy next week in the relationship that came to us in love that we might have peace. We give you thanks and praise in Christ's name. Amen. We're going to stand and join together as Corey leads us in our final hymn this morning, which is not our typical we've been singing. We're going to sing in Once in Royal David City. And we'll sing verses 1 and 4. invited to go into the fellowship hall for lunch and then hang around as we prepare for this time of year through the decorating. So let us bless our food and, and our time going forward. Lord, we, we are being dismissed now to go on to, into your kingdom and Lord, lead us to share the hope with others. But also, Lord, we're going to lunch just now. So bless our time. Bless those who prepared, the hands that have prepared our, our great meal together and for you who provided it. Give, we give thanks for that. And Lord, uh, and for the preparations of our sanctuary and our church, we, we want it to be uplifting to those who enter in this, this building that they not, might know that it's fully centered in you. So bless this food and this time. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.